Hey guys, how you all doing today? Now, if you're a regular subscriber, thanks ever so much for your continued support. It's great having you along for the journey. If this is the first time to the channel and it's the first video you've seen, a very, very warm welcome to you. I hope, hope you stick around. There's a little subscribe button down there. Have a little click on that. We've got some absolute peachy videos coming up very, very soon that you won't want to miss. Now, today's video, um, we very, very recently uploaded a video on the Garmin Descent Mark One. This was kind of really a review video based on me using it since May this year. So I've been using it for the last sort of five, six months. Uh, and that view, review video was really sort of my likes, dislikes, how I found using it as a dive computer. Um, and sort of looking at some of the apps, and some of the features, some of the customization. If you haven't seen it, there's a link to it up here in the corner, and I'll pop a link at the end of the video for you to take a look at, but uh, please do take a look. Now, with pretty much all dive computers these days, and pretty much all technology, everything has an app that you can attach it to, and the Garmin Descent Mark One is no different. Uh, in actual fact, it has its own app, it has the Garmin, where it connects to the Garmin Connect, uh, so a number of the different uh, Garmin uh, watches uh, connect to it. Uh, the Garmin Descent connects to the, uh, sorry, the Garmin Descent connects to the Garmin Connect and uh, that's what we're going to go through in this video today. So I have been using the Garmin Descent Mark 1 for a few months now. I obviously already had it connected to the Garmin Connect app, so I'm not going to go through the process today of how you would connect the device to the app. It's a very simple, straightforward process as you would do with any other smart device or dive computer. You would turn the Bluetooth on on the dive computer, sync it through the app, and you would connect that way. But what I do want to do is just sort of look at some of the very, very quick features in the Garmin Connect app. So I'm going to open the app, and there we can see that my resting heart rate is currently at 77 beats per minute, 79, 78. I've got a resting uh, BPM of 64 and my height is of 96. Now if I click on that bar chart, you can see the information over the last seven days. Uh, a couple of high days there, uh, the 3rd and the 4th of November, I picked at 126 and 128. Uh, I can view the information over the last four weeks and I can also view it over the last 12 months. So that's kind of cool. So we come back out of that. If we look at steps, now I have covered, according to this, 630 steps today. Uh, I've got a goal of 5,120 to complete today. So I'm just over a tenth of the way through my step day. However, uh, a slight flaw, and I think a little bit of a cheat, um, obviously the, the it picks up the, the gyroscope in the dive computer tells of any movement and that's what's covering the step count. So even though I'm sitting down talking to you, if I was to wave my arm in a motion of, let's say I'm walking, I'm moving forward, we will start to see that step count go up. There we go, 645, 649, 650. And 661, 64, 70, 72, 75, and oh, it actually thinks I've just walked up a flight of stairs because I've been moving my arm around. So um, I've just completed one floor of my 10 floor goal today by sitting, talking to you, waving my arm around in this motion. In actual fact, I've just completed another 100 steps in the process of me moving my arm around. Um, if I click on the bar chart there, you can see the steps that I've done. Uh, I did a lot of steps. I, I either moved my arm around a lot on the 1st of November, or I did a lot of walking. Um, oh no, I did. I do remember. I did, did do a lot of walking. That was the day that I went back home to a different station and then walked about 40 minutes to the car. So um, let's pick that up. That's good to see. Um, I clearly didn't wear the watch the next day <laughs> because it's not registered anything um, so we clearly had a, a high peak and then I had a resting day the, uh, the next day but there's my average daily count of 3,588 total distance of 
uh, 1.9 miles. Total steps of 25,124. Um, you can view that information over the last four weeks. So I've had a couple of big peaks there and over the last 12 months. So uh, clearly didn't um, do a lot of stepping in all of September. September. Oh, July, August and September. Crazy. Um, come back out of steps. So if we go obviously to floors, it's telling me that I have completed one floor today. Um, I might have done a few steps down to get some water and something to eat this morning when I grabbed a banana. But me moving my arm around completed the rest of the floor goal. Uh, if we click on the bar chart, we can see over the last seven days and again four weeks and again 12 months. Uh, so my average over the last seven days is I've climbed 11 flights of stairs each day. That's total 77, so averages out at uh, 11 flights per day. And I've descended nine. So I'm clearly walking up more than I'm walking down, which is um, interesting. Um, have we got any peaks? Oh, the 1st of November I climbed 21 flight of stairs and I went down 20. So... I clearly ended the day higher than I started it. Um, what's the next one I was going to talk about? A stress. So I'm currently at stress level eight, which I think is a relatively low stress level. If we click on the bar chart, we can see that on the 3rd of November, there's, there's a pattern happening here. 3rd of November, my overall stress level reached 49, which is crazy. Uh, there's the individual uh, in, uh, individual information for that day. So 41 minutes of rest. I had an hour and 20 minutes of low stress, an hour and 15 minutes of medium stress, and I had 41 minutes of high stress. What a torrid life I must have led on that day. Uh, so it's going to come back out of the stress. And then there's obviously the calorie count. Uh, my resting calorie count of 1,299. Um, my active calorie count of 24 makes up my total calorie count for today so far of 1,323. I wonder how much of that I have burnt while I've been sitting talking to you, moving my arm around. Um, if I click on the bar chart, you can also get the information um, on a daily basis. Um, I've burnt 19,000 calories over the last week. Is that good? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Um... I've clicked on, sorry, I didn't tell you what I did there. So just underneath calories, you've got activity, weight, and hydration. If I click on activity, I can tell the um, app what kind of activity uh, I am taking part in, so it can register any um, calories, steps, movement for that activity. Uh, if I go into weight, uh, I'm about 230 pounds, 220, 230 pounds. Yes, I'm a tubby boy, I'm getting old. Um, but I'm quite tall and quite broad. That's what I'm going to put it down to. Uh, and hydration, uh, I can add in, if you want to monitor your water intake, so the app will tell you if you're hydrated enough or not. Um, but you can tell um, the, uh, the Garmin Connect app, uh, the fitness app, how much water you're drinking. Um, and it can obviously monitor that through the day and tell you if you're hydrated enough. Um, just some information there. So yesterday there was my heart rate, my resting and my highs, uh, how many steps I took, how many floors I climbed, my stress level uh, was 13, how many calories I burned and my weight. I haven't changed my weight. I haven't weighed myself um, for a long time. I think I'm around about the six, 15 and a half, 16 stone mark. Uh, it's about 230 pounds. Uh, last seven days, that was my data for the, on, on average for each of those days. Um, if I go to the bottom there, um, so just next to it, it says my day, there's challenges. So you can um, cr either create a challenge or you can join a challenge. So if I was to say join a challenge, there's lots of different people in there. I've got Colette Kinley has done 23,509 steps. That's a challenge. Um, I'm not that interested in challenging um, Colette, but I wish her well in a step challenge. So I'm going to come back out of that. Um, calendar, I can also see the information over the last seven days, um, uh, the stuff that we just look for being in calendar format. There is a news feed there, so you can connect uh, the news feed through different apps, Facebook, 
and Google, and there is the obviously the uh, I think contacts. And then if the last one, if I click on more, you've got the all the different apps that are um, currently using on the phone. You can obviously add more to that. If we look at the diver one, because we are talking about this as a dive computer after all. Single gas dive, no, dive number nine was the last dive that I did. So if I click on that information, uh, it's giving me my, my little logo, my little logo, my name. And the dive profile, I was in the water at 11.28, I was out at 12.19. I did a maximum dive of 138 feet. Uh, that's 42 meters. I'm not quite sure why I haven't set this up as metric. Um, but uh, yeah, that was at 42 meters. That was actually at Y40 in Italy. Uh, if you guys haven't been, go, it's brilliant. It's a freshwater pool. Um, it's also fed natural spa, heated to about 33 degrees. It's great fun. It's in Italy, great weekend. Actually, um, there's gonna be a video on that coming very, very soon. So make sure you do subscribe and click on that little notification button to be notified when it uploads, but you don't want to miss that. Uh, if I go across to, um, I've sort of slid across to the, the little page icon. It's telling me that I was on a custom conservatism. Uh, how long the dive was, the depth, uh, my CNS and my uh, nitrogen loading uh, on leaving was 51% and 3%. Uh, it was fresh water and there's the temperature 93 Fahrenheit. Again, I don't know why I haven't set this up as centigrade, it's quite strange, uh, but that's uh, 34 um, degrees centigrade. It's, it's strange because it shows us um, meters and um, Celsius on the dive computer, but on the app, I clearly haven't changed it to read as um, Celsius and, and, and meters. Uh, if I go across to the tank icon, Telling me I was open circuit, I was on air, I was on 21% O2, but you can add in different information there if you were diving with a 12 or a 15 litre tank, uh, if you're using different gas blends, you can obviously add that information. And then now is the um, profile for my depth, my heart rate and the water temperature for that dive at Y40. Uh, my average depth was 40 feet. My maximum depth was 138 feet. So you can see that my dive profile was um, correct, depth at the start, and then I shot it off uh, lower after. Uh, my heart rate at 86 uh, meters, uh, at, oh sorry, 86 beats per uh, minute average, uh, but I peaked at 131. That was clearly when I was ascending back up from the depths. And the water temperature, 91 degrees was the minimum, 93 degrees Fahrenheit was the maximum. Um, interesting to see that the, just that little period of where the depth is is obviously where the lower, the one degree lower temperature um, is, which is quite cool to see. So it's gonna come back out of that, come back at the dive, but there's lots of different, um, if you click into activities, you can obviously, uh, if you're going to do uh, different activities, um, you can set it so that it's going to record the steps and the floor counts and the um, different scores for those activities. Um, health stats, um, no sleep data. Clearly I've not been sleeping. Uh, my weight, I haven't changed my weight. So if you, if you wanted to track your weight, you would add in your weight each day. I um, haven't been doing that. Uh, calories we've been through before, so uh, there's also my calorie count based on the movement of me wearing the watch. You can tell the app what you're eating basically, your calories in and out. So if you really wanted to track your calories uh, and be quite uh, uh, obsessive with it, you can do that also. Um, heart rate we've covered off already, I won't go into that again. We've covered off the stress and we've covered off the hydration. I haven't told it um, I've drunk any water, so it can't tell me anything there. Uh, performance stats, um, I don't know if there's going to be any data in any of these. I mean, my VO2 max, yesterday it was 40, it was fair. That's an indication of my cardiovascular fitness and should increase as your level of fitness improves. Oh, fair. I, would, I mean, my, my fitness age is 46. Oh, that's cheeky, isn't it? I'm 44. I mean, the app has just made me two years older than what I am. And it's the bottom 50% for my age and my gender. Well, that is just absolutely charming. Um, we're gonna go down to, um, I haven't set any training plans, but you can um, go through, if you wanted to do a 5K run, 
there is a, a, a different app to get you to that goal. Um, Garmin coach app will tell you how often, how long it should take, how many workouts you should be doing. And there's obviously one there for 10K and there's one for, uh, there for half marathon, um, which is kind of cool, quite like that. Um, workouts, um, we can find a workout if we so wish. I'm not gonna go through that with you now, but that information is there. And there's different courses, we can create a course. And just come back out of that. Um, insights, connections, groups. So there's an absolute ton of information in here. Download golf course apps. If any keen golfers out there, you can download the course, um, uh, the map for the course that you are playing at, and you can connect through the Garmin Golf app, and then that will obviously tell you, for example, once you've um, um, teed off, you get to the ball, it will then tell you how far you are to the pin. Uh, and things like that, so and obviously what your elevation is, so that's really cool, kind of like that. So if any King Golfers might want to take a look. Um, I'm going to come back to, I'm um, going to go back to my day and I just want to go to the um, top. So with that, sorry, that little, um, the icon that's showing the, the dive computer um, icon with a little green dot, it's telling me that it's synced, it's connected to this. I just want to open that. Um, and in here is sort of some of the systems and menus. So. Activities and app management, we can, activities and apps, I'm just gonna wait for that to open. Uh, these are all the um, ones here that are added that I've got. So when I click the top right button on the Garmin Descent, they're the ones that come up for me to select from. And then there's more down there that I can add to that. And then these are the ones that are able um, for me to download on. So when I go through, the app page on the dive computer. I can see all of these and I can add all of these, but as we covered off in the dive computer review video, you've got everything there from golf to uh, mountain biking, to stand up paddle boarding, to cross country skiing, to yoga, el uh, elliptical, uh, sorry, elliptical, and then jump master. Um, I've never opened it, um, but I'm going to assume that it's for parachuting because there was a, a, an image of a parachute there. But I would uh, hazard a guess that um, that's also doing the altimeter. So when you jump out of the plane, it's telling you what altitude you're at. But whether you would rely on just your Garmin uh, Descent Mark One, or whether you would have a proper parachute dive computer type thing, I've got no idea. But yeah, absolute ton of apps that you can add. Uh, the widgets. So installed onto the dive computer, we have the heart rate, the steps, the ABC, the calendar, notifications, the weather, so on and so forth. And these are the ones that are installed that you can add in and you can download more from the widget uh, app, which is quite cool. So there's tons of stuff, tons of stuff on there. Now watch face, it says there's no watch face uh, installed. Uh, if you go to the um, review video that we did, you would see that there are an absolute ton of watch faces for the Garmin Descent Mark 1 already, and then through the customization, you can change the style of the dial, style of the hand, what different data is being shown, the color, the background accent color, the accent color for the dials and the faces. So there's already an absolute ton of features on there already for you to choose from. This is just if you want to download any more um, that you don't um, have already on there. Uh, and then data fields, uh, again, uh, so this is things like your altimeter, your barometer, the temperature, uh, the wind direction, all, all of the things that show up are your, you know, your calories, your step counts. If you wanted to add any more data fields, you can do that through the app rather than doing it on the uh, dive computer itself. Uh, device settings, activity tra uh, tracking, um, we can track activity and move IQ. Uh, do not disturb during sleep, so I don't have the phone. Uh, I don't sleep uh, with, with obviously with the uh, the watch on, uh, but I don't want it buzzing or vibrating next to me. I don't have any audio prompts on um, either. I hate the sound of things beeping. I always have my phone on silent. Um, phone notifications during an activity or not do, during an activity. You can uh, choose when a phone notification comes up. Uh, tones. I've got the tones off. I just have the vibration on. Um, wrist heart rate, mate. You know, there's, there's lots of bits of uh, information in, in the settings there. Uh, alarms, you can create an alarm if you don't want to go into the watch itself and find where the alarm is to, to create an alarm. You can do that on the app. 
uh, a device uh, support center is just sort of for information in general but one thing I do like is the find my device now I've clicked on it it's telling me device found an alert has been sent to your Garmin device and it's saying on the dive computer it's saying watch found okay and it's flashing a light on the screen at me actually let me take it off so you can see it it's flashing, watch found, and it's vibrating quite uh, vigorously, and it's got a loud beep going on. So if you'd lost, let me just stop that. If you'd lost, or if you'd put your um, watch down, the dive computer down, you couldn't find it, you could find it through the app. Um, and in a very similar vein, there is also a Find My Phone um, feature in the app on the watch. Kind of acts a little bit like the old game of hot and cold. If you turn, uh, if you search for your phone in the um, in the watch, it's all done on proximity. So the closer you are to it, the louder the beeps get, and it's kind of like you know, or I'm a little bit hotter, or I'm a little bit colder. Um, it's kind of cool, a bit of a gimmick. But if you've lost the um, if you've lost your phone, you can find it with the watch. If you've lost your watch, you can find it with the phone. Quite cool. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Obviously the top right sync button is obviously sync it, but we're up to date anyway. The left hand logo with like a little tray is notifications. These are notifications that have come from Garmin um, as part of the Garmin Connect app. These are notifications uh, from your phone, uh, sorry, from your device onto your phone. They're just notifications from Garmin. But yeah, that is the Garmin Connect app in a nutshell, connected to the Garmin Descent Mark 1. Uh, pretty cool, I like the colors, um, you know, the big bold numbers, I quite like the, the, the design of it. There's everything in there that I really need. Um, I can't really think off the top of my head if there's anything there that I haven't used, simply because I haven't used all of the apps. I don't use this as a full on smartwatch, I've used it as a general everyday watch, I use it as a dive computer, I've taken it to the gym a few times. Um, and clearly it's telling me that I'm too old, <laughs> well, I'm two years older than what I am. Um, so maybe I should wear it to the gym more, and maybe I should do more, uh, wear it when I'm doing more exercise. But um, yeah, quite impressive it, definitely worth taking a look at. If you've got a Garmin uh, product of any kind, make sure you have um, downloaded um, the app. And um, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. As of always guys, if you found this video useful, give it a little thumbs up. Uh, do click on that um, subscribe button and click on the little bell icon to be notified. As I said, we've got some great videos um, coming up very, very soon. Um, and as always, guys, uh, feel free to share it. Any comments down below. Hope you found this video useful and uh, I'm going to leave you to it. I'll speak soon. Take care. Bye.